Ainsco is Britain's biggest mobile crane hire company. At dawn every day, their cranes crisscross the country. All right, let's go for it. Apart from my family, this is the second love of my life. So family and then cranes. They lift everything. Nice and steady. Yeah, the best way, mate. Get from wind turbines to priceless artworks. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Keep going. What if it slides out? It won't. It's not going to slide out. Their life's in our hands up there. One wrong move will be from us, and it's game over for them. 24 hours a day. Hold it. You've just got to get it right, because if you don't, it could pull the crane over. It's going to go. It's got to go. <laughs> Seven days a week. Don't pull it, Joe! Don't get me up there, that's for sure. Moe, you see it trying to twist round? They keep Britain lifting. Yep, up your the hoist. Not many people can say that they've had the opportunity to work with a ship like that. We're a small cog in a big machine, which helps make this country better. But facing increased competition and having invested millions in the latest cranes, the company is at a crossroads. If we don't deliver, it's a bit like football management. I guess we have some conversations about whether you get to stay for next season. Do I have a few sleepless nights thinking about that? Yes, I do. The company's headquarters in Preston, the hub of a national network of 460 cranes and over 500 drivers. Enquiries for lifts from all over Britain go through their national call centre. After a tough year following £100 million of investment, orders are coming through thick and fast. We go from John O'Groves to Land's End and we cover everywhere in between. We want total domination. We want to be the main player in the UK. We've got to do it right first time every time. At the moment, it's just crackers, absolutely crackers. It's phone call after phone call after phone call. It doesn't even stop at the weekends. It's just mad, absolutely mad at the moment. Nothing gives you more pleasure than coming to work in the morning and seeing a yard empty. While many of the cranes are on the roads, one of their biggest is in Scotland, working 24 hours a day. Crawler driver Andy Surridge is making his daily commute. Proper well, job, that's the way to go to work. Didn't even drop the camera, neither, that's the result. This is the LR1300. Pretty little girl. That's a 300 ton crawler crane. She looks so pretty. Some of them do look a bit ropey. Off easy on the wire, off easy. Off easy on the wire. Andy is working on the foundations of a new bridge being built over the Firth of Forth. His crane is sitting on a barge in the river, which presents its own problems. Hey, I just felt... Driving a crane on water is a lot, lot, lot different. It's on the land, all your work is done by reference points that are around you, buildings for vertical lines and all sorts. When you're out here on the water and it starts getting a bit bumpy, all that just goes out the window. Here he comes. Are we roughly on that far corner? Good job. Andy is working with divers who are removing debris from the seabed. Swing round now, uh, drop this in the water for the divers. Normally, what we do is you find the divers' bubbles and see where the tide's running, and you try and put the chains over the diver's head, low down gently, because he's literally you can see 12 inches in front of him. If that. Down on the wire. Down on the wire. Down on the wire. No stop. No stop. So there's a diver down now standing underwater. I think he's about five or six metres down. I'm going to lower the chains down to him. He's going to hook it onto the bag. And then we'll, uh, we'll bring the bag out. You can literally carry what I'm just about to lift in one hand. Uh, jump down, please. Jump down. Jump down. But there is a downside. 
Andy is working 12-hour shifts, six days a week, 500 miles away from his home in Kent. Quite a long old job, long days. And um, you just sit around and start thinking, you know, is this really the best thing I'm doing here at the minute? Birthday, barbecues, you name it, we've missed it. You think, ah, oh, just need to be home. Perhaps it is, it's just time just to do something different. To give him some home comforts, Andy has another lady in his life. My little darling, Beverly. Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, guys. Oh. Back in the end. Uh, yeah, so this is a uh, little bit of home from home, basically. Shower, toilet, everything in there. Then we got cooker, food cupboards, my bisto gravy. And you've got your comfy chair. He's just down there in front of the telly. Fridge is just there. For the beers. I think I told my wife that I'd work away for until we saved up enough for a deposit for the house. I say that was 25 years ago now I've been working away so I think we're still on honeymoon really because I've worked away so long I've probably only been with her a couple of weekends <laughs> together so we're still on honeymoon I think. <laughs> Keep it clean and tidy. Beverly makes it a lot easier. Oh, there goes my plate. Keeping drivers on big jobs is the key to keeping the crane business growing. Having invested in a state-of-the-art 750-tonne crane, the firm are keen to exploit new markets. In Humberside, the UK's biggest power station, Drax, is being converted to eco-friendly biofuel. <laughs> when will we see you again? You like Mark? Today, as part of the conversion, drivers Mark and John have brought the new crane to the site to lift an 84-ton roof section onto a silo. So you do not... <laughs> Fingers! For us, it's a simple lift. It's a nice lift, one lump. But obviously, for the client, it's uh, complicated for them. It is a big day. Very, very expensive. Uh, you only need one thing to go wrong, and it basically doubles the cost of everything. We're happy. Get in there. The crane can cost anything between 15 and 40k a day, and the pressure is on to get the lift right first time. On there now. Just as they start the lift, an alarm in the crane gives warning that the load is suspiciously heavy. Say that again. That's 87 ton on there now. 7 ton on that. Plain English is too heavy. It's coming up more than they said. Take some stuff out of it then. Handrail, gantry. This sort of thing's called cheating, really. They have took quite a bit of stuff out that's not supposed to have been in there, believe it or not. You know, it must be about a quarter of a tonne coming out of it now. You know what I mean? It's, I've had five of them already. Well, this is just stuff that's stored in it, save them crane up another day. Should we give it another go, mate? Three hours later than scheduled, and now three tonnes lighter, the lift finally gets underway. Keep going up, mate. You're all right. You're all clear at the minute. Nice to see. It's looking good all clear, mate. Keep going up. Let's just hope it fits. <laughs> That and settle it down now. It's tricky because we've only got 25 mil of clearance all the way around it. Hey, Mark, start and done again, mate. Turn the rope, mate. Turn the rope. We're pretty damn close. I'm not far off now. I'd say if we're anywhere in two or three mil, I'd be a liar. Liar. 
Yeah. It's another one done. We move on to the next one. That's the life of the crane gang. In Scotland, crane driver Andy has packed up Caravan Beverly and is heading south to the Heavy Cranes Division HQ in Preston. Poor old girl, she looked like she's been through the uh, tumble dryer by the time I get to where I'm going. He's applied for a change of job and has an interview for a role as a lift supervisor that could bring him closer to home. I've just given up a bloody good job on the 4th, earning a bloody good wage, so... I don't know whether I've shot myself in the foot, really. Or we'll have to wait and see. We've just got to sort out exactly what this new job is and uh, how I'm going to get about the country while doing it. It's the, really, I suppose, the main thing. Giving up long-term jobs would mean Andy would no longer need his Beverly. There are times that it becomes bloody awkward having a caravan. She's still there, anyway. She's still following me. Jim Fleming is the manager of operations within the heavy crane division. He's responsible for 40 operators and keeping them and their cranes out on the road. Room for that neck. You are sacrificing your, your social life for work, basically. Heavy crane guys are away all the time. It's very seldom in the back in the house. So the, the social life and the family life does suffer. It's a big commitment for them. Andy is one of his most experienced drivers. I hate things like this. Here we go. I'm good at driving cranes. I'm not good at um, meetings in offices. They're a sought after precious commodity. And the company's got to try and keep the guys that they've got. Okay, then. Yeah, we're good, mate. We're good. We're good. We're good. Right. <clears throat> what we're planning on doing, we can either keep you as a spare driver yeah. with the crawler cranes, train you mm -hmm. up on all the rest of the crawler cranes, yeah. um, and do a bit of lift supervising in between that. Yeah. or remove you from the crawler crane co uh, side to the mobile side. Mm. And then you, that then you become as a lift supervisor then. Yeah. But also doing the spare driver with the crawler cranes. Just give me a van, I'll shoot up and down the country all over the place all day long for you. Right. To get you a van, yeah. we'd have to swap you to the mobile side. You'd have to swap to the mobile side, yeah. 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 Right, right. Sweet, man. No Cheers, Jim. Thank you very much. No worries. You take care. Yeah, will do. Cheers, then. Unlike crawlers, mobile cranes have a different job every day. And as a lift supervisor, Andy will need a van to get about. Something like that would be perfect. I think he'll step up to the challenge. I think it'll be good. He's got a good attitude and a good uh, outlook on life. He just needs a bit more experience on the mobile crane side to be a good lift supervisor. Been able to get home a bit more. You have a few spare days in between. It's looking good. The future's bright, eh? London, where much of the heavy lifting is done under the watchful eye of the Hayes Depot. Are we stripping down for this one like we normally do? Oh, yeah. Come on, Scouts. Depot manager Di is enforcing her weekly weigh-in, called Ballast Watch. 12.6. Gone back up. Runner-up last month was Mr Vogan. Bring on the heavy ballast. <laughs> Kevin Vogan has stepped off the cranes to become a contract lift manager, but some old habits die hard. Bring it on. The 15, 20 years past uh, driving cranes now, but I like to keep up with the, keep the crane driver tradition going, so I'll eat whenever I can. Bring it on. 17-1. 17-1. It's just a bit of fun and uh, breaks up the week and uh, hopefully makes us all a little bit healthier. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're all watching what we're eating, aren't we? So. Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, back to work. Are we done? Kev is responsible for dealing with new business. He's heading to Park Lane to meet a client. This is a statue, I've been told, weighs seven tonne. Um, and it's going to be lifted, uh, I presume, from a vehicle by us onto a plinth outside the Dorchester Hotel. As you can imagine, it's extremely valuable and uh, someone's uh, pride and joy. Can't miss me at school. 
and sort of brought up the, uh, the school of hard knocks. We can understand how people can uh, find it very interesting, but uh, not for me. Even for the big guys, a delicate touch is sometimes needed. <laughs> Abby, how are you? Good, thanks, and you? Mm, a long time. You. It has no been, yeah. So this is it. Yeah. It's the delicacy at it's the, the top. It's the delicacy, yeah, yeah. And so it's keeping all the strapping as free as we can. Yeah. Should we uh, go and have a look yeah. at the uh, location? Sure. 500,000 people pass this yes. every day. Do they? And right. so it would be just amazing for people to see it here. Yeah. Is this where it's going, where this yeah. sculpture is? They want us to do it on a Sunday. Uh huh. They want us to come in as super early as we can, so a sort of 6 a.m. thing when traffic is lowest. Okay, and they're going to shut off one lane completely. Yeah, exactly. For Excellent. While we're here. Well done. Yeah. If it yeah. goes, there's no putting it back together. No. So you're my man. Well, I'll bring the super glue along. Exactly. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> it's just a different side of Crane Hire, you know. We have to take on the enormity of it and, the, and understand how delicate this, this item is. Because, you know, there's no second chance. John, can I have wages? Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm not paying you this week. Oh, that's good enough. The same <laughs> as last week. <laughs> With so much work around in the capital, manager Dai's job is to keep her 32 cranes and drivers as busy as possible. They're in the yard, they're on a basic eight-hour day, Hello. seven hours on a Friday, eight Monday to Thursday. Everybody got their wage slips right, Ronnie. When the crew are out working, they can more than double their income through overtime. They can take home 80,000, 90,000 a year on the larger cranes. It's just dependent on how much overtime they get. They do get grumpy and windy because, obviously, they're just on a basic eight-hour day in the yard. <laughs> Transport for London has told the company that their crane drivers must undergo a cycle awareness course if they're to continue working in the city. But this means a day on basic pay with all valuable work called off. There's no point in it. I'm not employed as a cycle driver, I'm employed as a crane driver. Well, why should I do it? I didn't run anyone over in London, in lorries, so why should I do it? Pointless. I'm not, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. Adam ran in and raving at me and everything, but for us to be able to get onto these sites, they have to at least attend the course. Thanks, Bill. You need to man up, Lee. Yeah? And keep your mouth shut. Wait, whoa, wait, wait. That's not going to happen, is it? But either way, Lee, you have to go and do the course. Right. Please. Do I get paid for it? Yeah, it'll be in company time, won't it? Right, okay. Yeah? Lee wins. A crane driver is not happy unless he's moaning. That is their job oh. to moan. <laughs> so, guys, yeah, gather yourselves over. Let's just quickly run through everything, get everybody familiar. Last year in London, HGVs were responsible for over half the cycling fatalities, despite making up only 4% of the traffic. <laughs> okay, right, never not. Come on. <laughs> well, it's a temple, isn't it? Just have a little ride around, just get familiar with them. <laughs> Woohoo! It's like a ballet out there. Ah. I don't get it. Oh, there we go. Observation, looking where we're going. Ah, oh, dear. They need to see the road from a cyclist's point of view. You ever get one of those days when nothing goes right for morning to night? You ever get one of them days? Yeah, I can't ride like this for long. Because my arse is killing me. All right, three. <laughs> Where are we going? This way. Woohoo! <laughs> but at the back, they're not taking it seriously. Slow down! Slow down! Slow down! Slow down. Try to kill somebody. This prompts a bit of a lecture. We go and we have fun and we do stuff and we're not always the brightest at what we do. Yeah, but this is all about blaming the driver, then, isn't it? Not the cyclist. <clears throat> it goes back. It goes back to who's got the control of the vehicle that has got the capacity yeah, no, to go faster. You know yourself. Violent. If there's ever an accident, it's always the car driver, the lorry driver that gets the blame. 
It's never the cyclist. First of all, let's look at who gets hurt in this situation. Who's the one that gets hurt? It's not just the cyclist, it's the actual driver as well who gets mentally hurt by that, it. Good, exactly that. Okay. So at the end of the day, regardless of where the blame lies with this stuff, the key thing about it is that whether you're the driver or whether you're the cyclist, you don't want to end up in that situation. You were joshing away there, having fun. Was it actually dangerous to anybody? No. I'm going home. I don't want to play no more. I don't come to work to ride a bike and be taught how to suck eggs on, on the road. It should be cyclists being taught. It's not professional drivers, should it? So, but hey-ho, let's crack on. London, 6am. Part of Park Lane is to be closed to allow the seven-ton marble sculpture, The Spirit of Life, to be lifted into its new resting place. But things are already running late. Hello, Kev. Hi, Kev. How are you doing? Yeah, we're just laying the plates now. We're with the people that sport the sculpture. Yep. Um, I've had to widen the road up a little bit. Yeah, you've got to have a uh, good half a metre there. Everything's got to be done as per script. Any rushing, slightest mistake, and who knows what can go wrong. Well done. Mm -hmm. yeah. The sculptor, Helene Blumenfeld, has flown in from Italy to oversee the positioning of her artwork. God, I'm going to be amazing. amazing. Loves the trees behind. I'm looking forward to experiencing that moment when art hits you uh, and you get that sense of, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that sense is actually, because I'm waiting to find out. Maybe I should have took a bit more interest in the art studies rather than the art teacher. She was, uh, she was very nice. That comes over this side. That's what um, probably old, it left it? the mark on the outside. Dead straight. Yeah. Having got the crate off, the sculpture needs to be moved very slowly into position. Hold that, hold that, hold that. Head up only, mate. Head up only now. Really steady on the head. Just creep up on the hoist there, mate. Touch more. The thing with marble is it's so brittle, so if you knock it with a hammer, you know, anything, you'll chip it, and then the work's ruined. So, yeah, you've got to be delicate with it. My original idea was to have it to more this way, but I think having it parallel with the, the steel plate looks the best. thought-provoking. I, mean, I can get it now. But to me, it's a flower opening. And I love flowers. I love the spring. I love daffodils. You've opened my eyes to art, you have. Aww. You really have. The world is so formed now, isn't it? It's so formal and so formed. So we know, you know, this is a street, that's a vehicle. No, I think people's and then this... imaginations get lost. Gets lost. I remember when I was a kid, there was a programme on the telly called uh, Day of the Triffids. Uh, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. It's Day of the Triffids, mate. This is our crane here. I do like mobile cranes, I must admit. They do look, they do look quite nice. 
In Southampton, crawler driver Andy has a new van and he has a new role. Now, lift supervisor, you've got a, um, you've got a lot, a lot, well, it's just completely different. You've just got a lot more responsibilities. If anything goes tits up or wrong, it's your job to uh, find a solution to the problem. The team are waiting for a 78-foot racing yacht looper to arrive to be weighed. OK, Matt, I'm going to turn in. We've just arrived from uh, the States. Since we've arrived, we've just been stripping the boat out and getting it ready for the lift. They'll be creating a single-point lift for us in order for us to get an accurate measurement of the weight of the boat so that we can enter the Maxi Regatta in Sardinia in September. The job will entail lifting the yacht clear out of the water. 15 ton sixes to the bow end, and then we make the adjustment on the stern end. Technical support manager Bob, the brain McGrain, has spent three months planning the lift. Two sets of 11 ton chains. Yep. Yachts are regularly weighed, but this is more challenging, as the looper is to be lifted with her 90 foot mast in place. This is tricky because our crane hoist lines are very, very close to the mast. The mast is vulnerable to damage and our hoist lines are vulnerable to damage, so we don't want the two coming together under any circumstances. But because it's very tall and because we're slinging it in the water, there will be a degree of movement of the yacht. And what we've got to do is make sure that that movement doesn't cause any impacts between our crane and their yacht. <laughs> As Andy will soon be working all over the country on different lifts, he needs to know every piece of equipment inside out. Which one does that go on? Number two. Number two. It's all different way, isn't it? All different. I've just not had a lot of experience with the bow bars, that's all. So it's all uh, second nature to these guys. The Royal Ocean Racing Club have sent an official to measure the weight. Why has it not been weighed before? Uh, it probably has been weighed before, but yachts' weights change all the time. You know, they add things, they cut things out, they change it. Uh, it also takes in water. Right. It, the boat actually gets heavier through its life. Even the plastic bit? Yeah. It's good for the crane hire industry in oh, the yeah. world, is that we have to go oh, around yeah. weighing them. This pity it's only one of them here, then. <laughs> it's a load cell. It costs a lot of money. You've got a shackle on the top, shackle on the bottom, and then it'll record the load. That'll you put tension on it, and it tells you what load you've got on underneath it. Aha! Here she comes. It's on its way now. It's nice, isn't it? There's some good fun to be had on that, I bet. Yeah, go on, just run it back round. Yeah. They're pricey old things, these boats, aren't they? So something like this, it's still, you're talking, I don't know, near enough two million, I don't know, even more than that. Scary stuff. If we got uh, tag lines front and back, so if we can use your people and you look after keeping it parallel to the key edge, and we'll look after up and down. <laughs> The position of the slings is critical. CRG is 2861 on that one. Just centimetres out, and the looper could be badly damaged. We're always pretty nervous about lifting boats. You know, such a huge machine, multi million pounds worth of boat, and uh, we don't want them to drop it. I'll bring it in a bit, mate. I'll bring it down a bit for you. And you just connect that sling onto that pin of that shackle now. Come through the boat, making sure there's nothing in there that isn't allowed to, to be there under the rule that we're, we're measuring well, about. On the other bit. So there's no crew kit, there's, there's no sails, there's no ropes, there's no food or water or anything like that. You imagine emptying your own home, it's like moving house, they, they have to take everything out. They're both the same, both on that cleat. They're not moved, they've probably moved yeah, half an inch. So, Bob, have you got it? We're holding her now, yeah. With the slings in position, the all clear is given to begin hoisting. She 
might change the orientation a bit when the keel comes out. So we just this bulb on the bottom, we just watch. But she's come up lovely. She's just standing a bit on the bow, which is what we wanted. Does anyone have a mobile phone on them or anything yeah. like that? Can you switch it off, please? Hello. He's just uh, checking the weight off the load cell, which is in our tackle at the top. He just wants it to settle down because it will fluctuate a bit. The gross weight is 33 tonnes and 110 kilos. With the data gathered, it's a job well done. It's crushed it. It was good. It looked good, so it must have been good. It was a lot better than I expected it to be. The boat came out of the water level, so, yeah, I'm just happy we're back in the water without any damage. It came up exactly how we wanted it to, just a slight bit bow heavy. So, no, very happy with that. Right, home we're bound. The Crane Gang are busy planning lifts all over the country. Today, they're heading to Cornwall. The company's push into green energy is paying off. Tomorrow morning, at what time do you intend to start? Farmer Mark Quinn already has one wind turbine. Now he's bought another. The team are here to put it together, but it's taken three years to get sufficient local support. This actually hasn't taken too long to get through planning. My first site took 17 years, so you have to have patience. We have invested a huge amount of money here. I have basically taken out a mortgage on my farm to buy this machine. Being as it's a new industry, it's always a risk. Come in, get some lights on here. You can probably see right up. The wind comes straight up off the sea and up the valley and hits right on the hill here. You can see from the trees around here, they don't grow straight. They're growing at an angle if they grow at all. Once plugged into the national grid, it could take as little as six years to pay off the £1.2 million investment. When I'm older, I'm going to save up for a wind turbine myself. They give us money and they produce energy and they can, they, I think they look pretty. We're going to have these two off now, both 10 tonne each. Supervisor Andy Piotrowicz will be in charge of the lift and has two days to get all the sections of the turbine safely lifted into place. You've got the hub assembly there that the three blades go on to, and then you've got the nacelle, which is like the gearbox. We'll take these two off now, and then we'll take the blades off, just basically to get the lorries away. And then we'll look there. at assembling this Fourteen. afternoon. You want to rebuild the crane now? The turbine has been supplied by a Dutch firm who send their own fitters. Getting these doors all right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. As wind conditions worsen, it's proving tricky. It's borderline now. We'll get this one off, put them on the floor, and then we'll, we'll reassess what we're going to do as regards assembly. It's getting too high. That's good, Bill. Keep coming at that. Keep it coming. The blades are actually designed to catch the wind. There must have been no point in putting them up. Fair enough. And there'd be no point in putting them up in a place that wasn't windy. The wind speeds have got up now this afternoon, so unfortunately it's turned out that we can't do any more pre-assemble, which basically means we can't put the blades on the hub, which we would have liked to have done this afternoon. So that's going to be postponed now till tomorrow. Personally, I, th I think they're bloody awful things to look at. And I live in the countryside, and I don't really want to be looking at them. A couple of decent power stages, mate. No dicking about with this stuff. 
it is now too windy to uh, offload. It is around 18 meters per second. It is nature and, uh, and I can't fight nature. <laughs> Heavy lifts may be a big part of the crane hire business, but the little ones all add up. It's for crane hire. Okay. Our business is lifting, whether it be a small item or a large item, that is our business. We can be lifting anything from even 50 kilos, but because of the radius or where it's got to be put, only a crane can do it. Even when we're lifting bags of sand, it's all business for us. Hiya, Dave. Which skip is it going in, the small skip? Yeah, it's the small one with the Ivy's jacket on it that you're looking at now. Oh, that's great. At Barnsley Town Hall, an elevator is being replaced. Keep going down. Jib back a touch, jib back a touch. The local depot has sent their oldest lift supervisor, Paul Gilpin, to oversee the job. Uh oh Down your roll, down your roll. Paul! Keep going, keep coming. Paul! Got you. I got two things on front of my face called eyes. Yeah, <laughs> very good. <laughs> on the crane game altogether, I've been doing it about 33, 34 years. I started with crane driving. It's good, it's good. Every lift is a different lift, and you learn every day, even at 65. As well as being a lift supervisor, Paul runs the yard at the Leeds depot. I've always liked cranes, and the new ones today, they're fantastic, compared to the olden days. 30 years ago, they were animals. Today, they're, they're built for the driver, uh, and everything is computers and this, that and other. In them days, there wasn't any computers. These are old crane books, crikey me. These go back donkey's years. That was a six-tonner, a six-ton crane. But you used to have to build everything up, the old jib sections on the backs, and put them all on, on the front. Really old cranes. In those days, you didn't have to take a licence because you had a driving licence, you could drive a crane. You just had to be 21. Somebody would obviously teach you probably a day and then you were away. That's an old photo. There's quite a lot of the old lads there. Quite a few have died. That's me there with the old Spanish tash. <laughs> they were good old days. Yeah. Or 65. <laughs> I'm quite fit actually for me for me age, but what is it? Sometimes it gets to you after a bit, you get out of breath. <laughs> which is which is normal. After 34 years on the cranes, Paul has decided to put in for retirement. I've come to that time in life. My father never got to retirement age for a starter, and he was only 62. And uh, that line of the family um, never reached 65. They never retired. They all died before. Yeah. So I just want to retire and just enjoy life. He's our superintendent, Paul. He's our key man in okay. yard. I don't know how we're going to manage when he goes. It's not long now, Paul, is it? No, it's not long now. No. no. It has a good atmosphere when Paul's here, cos we have a laugh and a joke, but we still get his work done, you know what I mean? It, all that will all that'll just go now. It'll be truly missed, you'll get. 5am in Cornwall. After a delay of one and a half days, the wind has finally dropped. The plan for today will be full erection. That means the two tower sections up, generator, assemble the hub together with the blaze and then lift that up probably later on this afternoon. Both together now, guys, hoisting up steady. Hoisting up steady. Despite near-perfect conditions,
they've hardly got started before there's a problem. Obviously not. Obviously not. Yeah. Jib back, mate. Jib back. Jib back. Jib back, mate. Jib back. Wasn't watching, was I? But no harm done. A little bit of paintwork. Nobody's fault but mine. Steady, mate. Hoisting up. This lift is the generator. It's the heaviest part of the turbine. Probably one of the or the second critical lift. This one. Wait, off. Millimetre accuracy is required to position it so that it can be bolted from the inside. Very, very slowly, cable up. Okay, slowly cable down. There, the ice of the crane driver now because he's, he's tweaking it up and down. So I gotta just once uh, millimeters now. Depending on the skill of the ease and gentle touch of the crane operator. Andy, move a little. Finally, they need to attach the blades. So around to your right. A little bit more. There you come, lowering off, mate. Far enough. Keep it going. Right, I might hold that. All stop there. Hold that there, Bill. All stop. Oh, Andy, you do it so excellent. You are the best <laughs> green supervisor I ever have seen. I like it when it works. <laughs> Just take a little bit of weight. It's pinching up steady now. Pinch up steady. Wind is, is very, very critical for this lift now, with blades and rotor assembly. There has been instances in the past with other companies in other countries where they've been in the process of lifting and the weather conditions have changed suddenly. That can be disastrous. Just jib down for me, Bill. Jib me down, mate. If the wind gusts over 10 miles per hour, then they'll begin to lose control. You don't want to use some of the shirt tonight, you can see it. Keep the nose in line with the face of the, yeah. the boom. Just give it a little pull, and as I said, it's got a bit, a bit breezy, isn't it? Right at the wrong time. Keep the tension on it. That's it. Just keep it like that. <laughs> Almost there. You have to thread it onto the shaft so it's ever so gentle movement, hoisting up and then booming down to get the shaft entered onto the splines. And it's just a question of millimetres at a time. Guys, at the top on the hub, the bottom blade is very, very close to the crane boom now. OK, uh, can you boom up a little then? Then for Wind's caught it again, Blades pressure's coming on. Mate, I'm gonna put on some nuts. Oh, that's good. Bon. All done. Yeah, I can leave it in the eyes. Who wants to think of all of them? What's that? I've got no idea. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Goody, goody. <laughs> After three days of battling the elements, it's a moment the Dutch are keen to celebrate. <laughs> 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 
Dutch exuberance, yeah. It is a green energy. It doesn't pollute anything. Bar the scenic view. If I had a beautiful view like you've got here, and, and the house was 100 yards away, and then somebody decided to put a... I don't know, I think I'd have a moan. Well, that's a good uh, job, uh, Andy. Well you done. Perfect. Congratulations. And you. <laughs> they make the farmer some money and uh, keep him happy. they got enough money, but he's going to have a bit more now, isn't he? From the latest technology to some of the oldest, Portsmouth, the home of the Royal Navy. Nelson's flagship, the HMS Victory, is undergoing a £50 million refurbishment, and the crane gang have been called in to clear her decks. These are my lucky pants. Dave and Lee are both former crane drivers who've worked together since leaving school. They're now specialist lift supervisors in charge of the most challenging jobs. Ain't no water in here. Ain't no good. Their nickname, Chuckles, reveals their unique way of working. Oh, this is well cool. Smart, isn't it? Imagine living in here. And with the doors of the HMS Victory closed to the public, they get a crash course in the history they're lifting. That's oh, a sleeping quarters. That's a jowl, isn't it? Yeah, look, there's the old gel. No, it's not a gel. It must be. It's not. What is it then? A medicine thing. Oh, yeah, look. Look, bullet extractor. Where's the bullet extractor? Number six. Oh, it's like a pair of tweezers. Number seven, an amputation knife. Huge, isn't it? Massive. Yeah, they were a lot smaller, weren't they? They weren't uh, in 300 years. They wasn't as tall as what we are. <laughs> what we are? Oh, I'm not tall. It's unbelievable. It's a mystery down there. Today, they're responsible for attaching the loads to the crane and making sure everything is lifted without causing damage. The job is um, the, the lifeboats off the HMS Victory, picking them up, putting them on the, on the dock down the bottom there. There should be three or four of these and cannons as well. So, uh, should be pretty interesting. All ready to go, yeah? Just pinch it, see how she's setting, mate. Every item on the deck is a valuable piece of British heritage, so has to be handled with care. Oh, that don't sound too healthy. It was just stuck on the paint, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. All good, yeah? Yeah, yeah good. Oh, Shag? Yep. That's better. I sound that. That's it. What we'll do is we'll, we'll just look it and see how she sits before she's right clear of the cradle, mate. We'll, we'll know when she comes up. It's time for the second boat. Off you go. No. No, stop. Oh, it's mullered it. Look. Yeah. Yeah, it's very flimsy. It's, uh... In the company's depot in Leeds, before yard manager Paul Gilpin retires, he wants one last go in a crane. Sat in the yard is the state-of-the-art self-erecting tower crane. Very impressive. When you look at it, it looks like some kind of monster. This type of mobile crane is unique, as the driver can raise his cab to the top. OK, here we go. You can see for miles. Pennines, everything. Motorway, beautiful. The planes are flying about. It's a fantastic view. Oh, a lot of people don't like it when you're up here. But I love it, absolutely love it. And you don't know really what's going off down there. That's the only thing I don't like about it. <laughs> Can you come in a minute, love? I, I need you in here, I need some stuff loading. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, then. OK, love, all right, bye. Mm. 
just been tipexing his name out of the book and it's very strange. It's his last day. Yeah, it's very sad. You can ring him up and say, can you do this, can you do that? And he does it. So he is going to be missed. And I'm sure he'll miss us as well. Right. I'm summoned. Summoned me. Beam. Oh, very, very good. <laughs> Irreplaceable is the word I think we need to be looking for in more ways than one. Yeah, we sadly missed. Good health to everybody and thanks very much. Very nice. The old ones are the best, as they say. <laughs> I'm not saying out about the young ones, but they still haven't got the, the dedication that the old ones have got. And Paul's last of a breed. They'll never get them more like him. Never mind. So we're looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Right, Michael. All right. You look after yourself. You and old Paul. It's been nice knowing you. You and old Paul. You take care, yeah? Yeah. Don't be a stranger. I will. No, you right, don't get it. You I'll get see it. you, Dawn. <laughs> you take care. You do, yeah. You look after yourself, Dawn. And you, yes. And uh, take no care. Tears. No tears. No tears. See <laughs> ya. No you. you take care. Keep in touch, Yeah, you? I will. You look after yourself. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> In Portsmouth on HMS Victory, to prevent any further damage to the lifeboat, the ship's carpenter is summoned. Here we go. You can have that. Dave's using the wooden strut to keep the slings from putting pressure on the delicate boat. Right. Yep, up you go on your hoist. Up on your hoist. OK, there, mate. It's about as much as you're going to get there, I should think. The boat delay means they're now lifting in front of a gathering crowd. There's always a bit of a delay. You just have to manage things as they happen, really. Always got my eye open looking for a problem. Um, when the visitors are coming in is probably when it gets a little bit stressful. Dave and Lee are both qualified to work as supervisors. They take it in turns to run the lift or be the slinger. I'm in charge. Watch that. Hey! Do as you told! <laughs> you won't. <laughs> If you ignore him, then he goes away, yeah. <laughs> Oi! Just ignore him, he goes away. <laughs> the best thing to do in it is ignore him. Sorry! Did you want me? Sorry! That's uh, better. It's our fault. Yeah, he's moody. Sam, they call him. Small, angry man. <laughs> Smaller, I have to work harder. I should be on more money. You don't like being wrong, that's what it is. That's it. Got guns on it to come down now. <laughs> At 11 a.m., an hour after the lift was due to finish, they're almost done. Got a Japanese flag on the back of it, look. Must be docking there, then, mustn't it? That's it. With precious history lifted, they can relax. Oh, yeah. oh. 
No, this is pretty. We are pretty lucky and very privileged, I think, a lot of the times, uh, for the jobs that we do do and that what does come up for us, really. You know, not many people can say that they've had the opportunity to work with a ship like that. 250-year-old ship. Lifting the guns and, you know, bits and pieces. It's, you know, it's an honour, really, isn't it? And crane driver Andy can also relax as he approaches home. We're in lovely Kent now. You can tell we're in Kent because we've got beautiful blue skies. Sunniest part of the UK, this is. This will be the first time he's seen his wife Jacqueline in three weeks. Crushed it, job done. Very much in love. So it's quite, it is very hard for us to be apart most of the time. There we go. There we go. There's my tree. There's my little garden, look at my grass. And my grass has not been cut. My plant's all right, my tree's all right. All that good stuff. I always feel a bit guilty about doing this bit. One hand I'm on and there's some flowers. And the other hand I've got two bags <laughs> watching. She loves it, she loves it. Are you in? Hello? Yeah. How are we, all right? Mm. Ooh, love you. Oh, Mr. Tons. Mm -hmm. You think, all right, you look at me, you are looking better. Look at you, don't your hair. It's a beautiful long hair when I left. Oh, we've got a new vase. So, how much was the vase in? It was a birthday present. Oh, was it? Yeah. Did I know it was a birthday present? No, you've not been home. Oh, of course, yeah. No, I missed your birthday, didn't I? Mm hmm. Blimey. Seems like I've been away for ages, isn't it? Mm hmm. Yep. Three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be lost without you, wouldn't I? I wouldn't even know how to pay the gas bill. No, you wouldn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just look forward to when he is home, really. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we made the most of the time we have together. We certainly do, he's gone, we? I can relax then until he comes home again. <laughs> And in Leeds, another driver has made it home. This is the new adventure. This is the... Instead of cranes, it's motorhomes. And this is what we're going to do. Lorraine and myself, we shall be touring Europe. No more cranes. I've had it for the last 30 years. Yeah. Is it 30 years? Yeah. Yeah. Every, everywhere it takes me, I'll go, I put that up, I put that up. So no more talk of cranes. <laughs> Life begins now. We're off. We're away. Spain. Yeah. France. France, yeah. Down yeah. in Italy. Yeah. Parlez-vous français? Oui. Oui, oui, yes. Oui, oui. oui, oui. <laughs> we will be very, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, an empire that matched the glories of ancient Rome. Raggy Omar's brand new series, The Ottomans, Europe's Muslim emperors, next on BBC Two.